Hi, let's learn about this model of pharyngeal arches where they have shown the cartilaginous derivatives of different arches. This is the lateral view of developing embryo and this model represents the adult derivatives derived from each pharyngeal arch cartilage. So here is the first arch, second arch, third arch, the fourth and sixth arch are shown together. Let's try to identify the derivatives of each arches now. The first pharyngeal arch gives rise to the maxillary process and the mandibular process which gives rise to the development of maxilla and the mandible involving the lip. Apart from this, the first pharyngeal arch cartilage also known as the Meckel's cartilage gives rise to the malleus, incus, the spine of the sphenoid. The cartilages develop into these bones. The perichondrium where it persists only gives rise to the anterior ligament of the malleus and the spinomandibular ligament which extends from the spine of the sphenoid to the lingula. These two are very often asked as spotter questions. Right? So this is regarding the cartilaginous derivatives of the first pharyngeal arch. What about the second pharyngeal arch cartilage? The second pharyngeal arch cartilage is called as Richard's cartilage. This gives rise to development of the stapes, styloid process, the smaller cornu of the hyoid and upper part of body of the hyoid. Then wherever only perichondrium is left, this develops into the stylohyoid ligament. These are the bony structures or ligamentous structures derived from the second arch cartilage or Richard's cartilage. What about the third arch cartilage? The third arch cartilage gives rise to the lower part of body of the hyoid bone and it gives rise to the greater corno of the hyoid. Then the fourth arch cartilage gives rise to the thyroid cartilage which is one of the major cartilages of the larynx. The sixth arch cartilages gives rise to all other cartilages of larynx except epiglottis. This is regarding the cartilaginous derivatives. If in the same model the examiner asks you about the muscles derived. Remember the first arch gives rise to all the muscles of mastication, anterior belly of digastric, the mylohyoid muscle, tensor tympani and tensor villi palatini. What is the common factor between all these muscles? All these muscles develop from the first pharyngeal arch and hence they are supplied by mandibular nerve. The muscles derived from the second pharyngeal arch includes all facial muscles, stylohyoid, the posterior belly of digastric and also one of the smallest muscle in the body, the stapedius which helps in stapedial reflex. All these muscles are innervated by facial nerve. The third arch gives rise to only one muscle that is stylopharyngeus. It is innervated by glossopharyngeal nerve. The muscle of the fourth arch is cricothyroid, innervated by the external laryngeal branch of superior laryngeal nerve, which is in turn a branch of vagus nerve. The muscles derived from the sixth arch include all intrinsic muscles of the larynx, which are innervated by the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Once you have described about the muscles, the examiner can ask you about the nerves of each arch. The nerve of the first arch is mandibular nerve, second facial, third glossopharyngeal, fourth superior laryngeal branch of vagus, sixth the recurrent laryngeal branch of vagus. Right? All these nerves are post traumatic nerves of the respective arches. The pre traumatic nerve of the first arch is represented by corda tympani. If the examiner goes one step further and asks you about the arterial derivatives, remember artery of the first arch is represented by maxillary artery. The majority of the first arch artery disappears leaving out only maxillary artery. In case of second arch, it is represented by stapedial and keratico-tympanic artery. The artery of the third arch is common carotid artery. Artery of the fourth arch on the right side and left side differs. On the right side, it gives rise to part of the right subclavian. On the left side, it gives rise to arch of iota. The artery of the sixth arch is very peculiar. The distal part of the right sixth arch artery disappears. Proximal part forms right pulmonary artery. Whereas the distal part of left sixth aortic arch artery persists as ductus arteriosus. The proximal part persists as the left pulmonary artery. What is ductus arteriosus? This is 
one of the shunts which are seen in fetal circulation connecting the left pulmonary artery with the arch of aorta. So in one model you can be asked about all the derivatives of pharyngeal arches. The cartilaginous derivative, the muscular derivative, arterial derivative and the neural derivative. One of the most important model that you should never skip for your gross anatomy practical exam.